So I'm just about to call some people who are on the other side of the world, just about as far away from Copenhagen as you can possibly get. They're 14 and a half thousand kilometers away on the Coral Sea, that's off the coast of Australia, in a small boat. And I'm going to find out what they're doing there, what they're seeing there, and more importantly, what that has to do with what the climate change talks that are going on here in Copenhagen. Hello, is that Simon Musto? Simon, this is Martin Atkin from Inside COP15. Um, tell me, what, what are you doing out there? Yeah, we left uh, Australia uh, three days ago um, from the Queensland coast on the 4th of December. Uh, we're currently sitting, as you can see, on a beautiful, picturesque coral cay, 350 miles offshore. The purpose of the expedition has been to look at uh, the range of processes and of course the wildlife of these amazing places and an opportunity to to look I guess through the lens of climate change and report some of what we observed back to uh, you guys in Copenhagen. I'll just hand over to John now for uh, some information on what we've been seeing. John. Hey Martin. Um, so how's it going? Yeah well it's been a really good uh, interesting trip so far. We've seen uh, the different impacts from cyclones and recruitment from the barrier reef out here, which is now, as uh, Simon said, about 300 nautical miles out to sea. And the first uh, area we had uh, cyclone damage from last year that had no recruitment and a lot of algification. And out here uh, at Lihu, it's uh, uh, almost nearly pristine. And uh, you can also, with the clear water, you can have corals that are down deep that would normally be at 10 meters. So we were seeing corals at over 30 meters that live in the Barrier Reef. And that's important in the fact that um, uh, this could be a, a reseeding uh, source uh, as the impacts of climate change uh, affect the Great Barrier Reef as we've seen it with the uh, bleaching over the last few years. Okay. and. Um Perhaps Nicola can tell me a little bit about exactly what coral bleaching is and what that has to do with global warming. So yeah, we've been seeing some coral bleaching as John mentioned, and these are patches of, of stark white coral. Um, and what's happened in these instances is that the coral has been to, exposed to some extreme temperatures for a prolonged period of time. And this has caused the zooxanthellae that live um, with the corals to, to be released from the coral tissues. They start to produce too much oxygen, the corals um, get stressed out and they release the zooxanthellae, um, causing the coral bleaching event. So this is, a, this is obviously something that we've been witnessing. So, um, of course, with coral bleaching, if these occurrences happen more frequently than every five years, it gives less and less time for the corals to recover. And so, it makes you question in, in the face of climate change whether we're actually pushing these ecosystems beyond a point of no return. Okay, Nicola, it's great to talk to you. Perhaps you can put me back over to Simon. Thank you. So, Simon, um, good to talk to you. Perhaps we can hook up again next week when you'll have had a chance to do a bit more of in investigating. And uh, good luck with the rest of the expedition. Thank you, Martin. We'll, we'll look forward, hopefully, to catching up with you, as you say, uh, later in the week. Okay, goodbye.